Hello and welcome. I am going to do a walkthrough today of the second, actually, sorry, the first semi-final from the Microsoft Excel World Championships 2023. Second for me because I did the, I took part in the second one, so I did that first. I've done a video on that. <clears throat> uh, I am gearing myself up to uh, to revisit that brutal finals question. I'll do a video on that in the not too distant future. Anyway, uh, for this one, I thought about because I had I didn't kind of take part in this case live. I thought about trying to do a sort of true live run in the in the same kind of way as the uh, as the contestants on the night did um, but then I decided that was actually probably not going to make for the best video because they only got to see the case for like I don't know less than a minute or something before they started um, and it's probably going to be more enjoyable to watch if you actually understand what's going on first so I took some time to read it I'm going to take some time to explain it to you and then I'll see what I can get done <clears throat> so here's the setup the idea is we're modeling uh, modeling the Excel World Championships. Um, so we've got uh, various different kind of profiles of players uh, with their various uh, nicknames and then their their skill out of 100 on functions, analysis, tables, lambdas, VBA, design, and speed. And then we've got a corresponding database of cases uh, which are each scored on their difficulty along those same dimensions. So in other words, how important are functions to being able to solve epic esports escapade? Very important. How important are lambdas? Quite important. How important is speed? Not very important. Uh, analysis is of no importance to this one, etc. <clears throat> and so the idea is, I'll come back to the bonuses uh, later, the idea is that first we're going to calculate a weight for each one of these things. So in other words, here uh, the points here add up to 47. So uh, the weight of each one of these is the raw points divided by the sum, divided by the 47. So, <clears throat> you know, speed will be the highest weight, design will be, uh, sorry, tables will be the lowest weight, uh, but they'll all add up to one. So the first question is just testing that. you got to figure out the weight of the function skill for each of these cases. Uh, then you start to think about how you score a player. The basic idea is that you multiply their score on each skill by the weight on that case of that skill. Uh, so all the scores are out of 100, so then you, you sort of take a weighted average of those according to the, the weighting of the case, that gives you a number between 0 and 100, uh, and then you multiply that by 10 to get a score between uh, 0 and 1000. Uh, so this is, <clears throat> then there's the various other things that get layered in later, but that's how you figure out a player's score. So then we go on to level three, we add in another factor, which is game night form. Uh, and that is basically, uh, you know, you multiply by that. So in other words, 90 means you score 90% of what you would score on an average day. 120 means you score 120%. So it's just up or down according to form that day. <clears throat> then for level four, we start to have multiple players and the luck factor comes in. And the luck factor is basically if two players are close together, meaning there's a less than 10% difference between them, uh, then they start to guess. Uh, so it's kind of the equivalent of people using ran between in the real competition. Um, and so if they're that close to each other, then you add a number of luck points to each person's score. I feel like you'd be doing pretty well to get 49 points by lucky guessing, but you never know. I guess a lot of these are lower. Anyway, that's the idea. <coughs> then level five is the same thing, except now we've got four players. The slight subtlety here is that the luck points are only applied to players who are within 10% of each other. I've got to hit pause, someone's at the door. Right back. Okay, sorry about that. So I was just saying that the luck factor only kicks in if you're within 10% of some other player, um, which kind of seemed confusing. I think I've maybe worked out how it makes sense. It seemed confusing to me because it seemed like if second and third were very close, then they would both guess and could potentially overtake first. But I guess the way it's calibrated, they usually score kind of, I think it's said they usually score six to 800. Uh, and so if you're 10% away from first place, then these luck numbers are not big enough for you to catch up. So that kind of makes sense. Um, so that's that. Then level six is just the same thing, but with eight players. And again, if you're within 10% of somebody else, um, then then you apply the luck. If you're not, you don't. And you just have to figure out the total score for all eight. And then for level seven, it's the same idea, except that uh, in in the same style as this semi-final itself, there were there are eliminations. So you eliminate the last place player after five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and twenty-five minutes. <clears throat> and so you're aiming to figure out the total score. So basically, the idea is that you assume that they score 
kind of proportionally as they go along. Um, but um, but then, you know, when someone is eliminated, their score stops going up. Um, and luck factor is not applied. Yeah, so you only apply luck to the people who make it to the final three in this case. <clears throat> okay, so that's the setup. Um, yeah, I think that's that's enough chit chat. Let's uh, let's dive on in. So, question one: uh, Find the easiest case in the database, the one with the lowest average complexity score. How many letters does its name contain? So, uh, you could do this in in simpler ways, but I'm gonna. Uh, so, if you want to find the lowest of something, then XLOOKUP zero and match the next larger item is a good way to do it. Uh, so, the average scores we can just do by row of this list and you could say average but some will give you the same answer it's slightly shorter to type uh, and then the return array is going to be uh, this list of case names uh, i'm just going to return that first just get oops sorry i gotta say uh, exact match or next larger item uh, so that'll give me uh, the case name and then i just need to figure out how many letters are in this if i take out the spaces and colon so you could just do two substitute substitute space out substitute colon out uh, or a different way you can do it is you can say text split uh, split this on two delimiters one is colon the other is a space <clears throat> and then put it back together with concat and now you can see you've got the name without any of that stuff in it and then we're just interested in the length of that <clears throat> okay, how many letters in total do the names in all the cases in the database contain? Ignore spaces and colons, uh, and then assign a number to each letter, from A being 1 to B, uh, to I guess Z being 26. What is the sum of the numbers that correspond to all the letters in the case database? Ignore all special characters. Now it's interesting, here and here it says ignore spaces and colons. There are actually some other special characters in there. I noticed like there's there's uh, apostrophes, and I think I saw an ampersand in here somewhere. But anyway, we're not interested in those, so let's just get a list of letters. And one way to do that is <clears throat> using the characters. So we can say car of uh, sequence of 26 starting from uh, if you happen to know 65 is the code for a or you could say code of a uh, that gives you the list of letters and then <clears throat> we can say uh, let all cases be concat of this and we want to know how many uh, of each of these or actually let's do upper concat because we're uh, substitute is case sensitive so we want to know how many of each letter occurs in this um, and the easiest way to do that is to see how much shorter it gets when you substitute that letter out. So we're going to say len of all cases minus, <clears throat> this is a pretty kind of standard trick, minus len of substitute all cases, replacing each of these letters in turn with blank. <clears throat> that tells you how much shorter it gets when you take each of those out. So the sum of these is the answer to this first bonus question. Uh, nope. How many letters in total do the names of all the... Hmm, interesting. Uh, concat. Hmm. That's surprising to me. Uh, okay. Let's just see if I take out spaces. Three hundred thirty-nine spaces. Yeah, that does seem like it's at least about right. Uh, so what could be going wrong? Don't know. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's just uh, try this. Let's try sum of len of this minus len of substitute this. Uh, sorry, upper <coughs> of this for a to blank. Oh, right upper of that close. That matches. Okay. Something weird is going on here. <clears throat> so let's copy this down and see if it always agrees. It does always agree. Okay. Unless the answer took the ignore spaces and colons literally. <clears throat> so let's just try that. So we'll say concat 
of all of these. And then we'll say substitute, substitute. <clears throat> so take space out and take semicolon out. Uh, and take the length of that. So that would include the other special characters. Is that? That is also not the right answer. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to... Well, I guess that's going to make the next uh, bonus question have the wrong answer as well, but whatever. Uh, sequence 26. So we should be looking for the sum product of those two, but presumably will be the wrong answer because I'm wrong so far. No, that's the right answer. That's super weird. How many letters in total do the names of all the cases in the database contain? All right, I have to see. What is the answer supposed to be? 2869. Huh. I don't know how we could be off by nine on this. All right, I'm going to leave it for now. I'll figure it out later, and I'll put something in the in the comments. All right, anyway, that's enough uh, setup. Let's go do some stuff. So <clears throat> for, for this, I think it's going to be helpful to just give some names. So I'm going to call this p-code. Uh, I'm going to call this p-skill. Mm, then I'm going to call this, actually I don't even need to use the case names because the cases are always referred to by numbers, so that's fine. Um, I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way, I'll put it down below instead. And then what I really want is the weight of each of these. So I'm going to say sum by row of this sum. Uh, and then we're interested in this divided by this. And that gives me my weights that add up to one for each case. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so then for question one, here we are, we're just interested in, so we want 0.1489, which is indeed what we get here. <clears throat> so here we're just going to say uh, round of index the function's weight uh, by uh, G78, uh, and we run around it to four decimal places. So that's all good, pretty straightforward. Uh, so now we're going to calculate uh, the player skills. So here we're going to say x look up this in p code returning from p skill. <clears throat> and that's going to give the vector of their skills. Uh, and then we're going to say index. Sorry, I haven't given this uh, this table of weights a name, which I need to. So we'll call this uh, WTS for weights. So then we're just going to say index WTS by row number zero. That gives that. And we're going to uh, actually, sorry, let me move both of these up here so that we can line up with the example. <clears throat> then we're going to take the sum product of this and this. And sure enough, that seems to be matching. Then multiply by 10 and then round. Uh, so we'll just I'm going to wrap that all into one. So we'll say x look up this in p code returning from p skill uh, times uh, index wts uh, case number. Uh, column number is zero for all columns. Uh, we want to take the sum of those two multiplied by each other, multiply by 10, and then we want to round it to a whole number. Round zero. <clears throat> okay. All smiles. Okay, so next level, level three, we're going to do the same thing, but add in the game night factor. And that just means we multiply by this over 100. And that's all good. Okay, so now for the rest, I think it's probably going to make sense to have a model on a separate. You could quite conceivably kind of, especially for the two-player one, you could do this, you know, building a cross for the four-player, you could kind of do it, but it's going to get pretty ugly by the time you get to the eight-player. I think it's going to be better to have a separate model tab, so let's do that. Uh, we'll put our game number here. So I think we're on level four. Yes, so I'll take example four. Uh, then I'm going to say X look up this in here column B, returning from, and then it goes down to as many as eight players, so we'll return from all of this. <coughs> uh, oh, sorry. And then from all the rows, that gives us that. So then uh, we've got our case, is just this. Um, and then player, what are the three things, player? Game night factor and luck, yes. Uh, um, and let's just uh, let's just do this. We can take 
all of these and put that over here. I'm just going to replace player X with just player. And then what we can do is uh, I'd say two row filter this where this blah, uh, equals this. Sorry, not two row, but two call. <coughs> uh, and hopefully we can ignore blanks. We might not be able to do that after, but now after we've filtered, that won't work. All right, fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so we're just going to lock this and this. <coughs> and then we get all we need. So just to check, if I do that, for example, seven, yeah, that works. Okay, so then uh, we want their uh, score, pretty luck, uh, luck, question mark, and then final score. So the score pre luck is going to be, um, I'll just do it again, sum of x lookup. This in uh, P code returning from P skill. This is like just on the cusp of where it might make sense to uh, to have written a lambda. I think in the competition it probably doesn't. Uh, it probably would not make sense. Uh, so that column number is zero. Uh, so we sum all of those, multiply by ten, multiply by game night factor over one hundred. <laughs> And that is the score pre-luck. Uh, I'm just going to say if error zero. <clears throat> so let's just see. We should have an example that describes this. Got to level four. 786 and 803. Yeah, good. Okay, so then uh, what I need to think about is, is there another player within 10% of this player? And it, it's quite specific about this. It is... Here, yes, the difference is calculated as the larger number of points divided by the smaller number of points. Um, so the range that I'm interested in uh, that's kind of close enough to this is going to be uh, this times 1.1. I need something to be less than that, and then I need it to be this divided by 1.1, I think. So then let's see the larger one minus the smaller one uh, over the smaller one. Yeah, so that's my that's my upper and lower bounds. So that multiplied and divided by one. So then I'm going to say count ifs. Uh, this <coughs> lock wh where uh, is greater than or equal to no strictly greater than uh, this times uh, sorry divided by one point one, and then the same thing where it's strictly less than that multiplied by one point one. Uh, and then what I'm interested in is, is that greater than one. Uh, and if it is, then lock applies. So then the final score is going to be uh, equals uh, this plus if lock, then block points, otherwise zero. Uh, so that gives us 835, 844, which, yep, yeah, is right. Mm, and then we're going to need to round that. Okay. So that's it for that one. Um, so now I guess what I need is from 61 down to 150. So I want a sequence of 90 starting from 61. I think we'll do that. Yes. Uh, so then we're going to have uh, it's going to be L4, L5, L6, L7. Um, so L4, what are we interested in? The winning score? Or the we're interested in the winning score. So that's just going to be max of these two. <clears throat> but then I'm going to uh, data table the whole thing where the column input cell is A1. And hit refresh, and then we're going to take these down as far as 80, I think, and put them in here. And hopefully they'll be right. And they are. Hooray. Okay, level five, four player match. Uh, luck factor. So I, I think there's nothing to change here. Let's check. Uh, so what is the answer? We want 3129. Cool. Okay. Uh, so then maybe I don't need to change anything for level 5 or 6 then. Let's see. Example 6. 6373. 
six three seven. Okay, so in that case, I guess I can just do L four to six as one thing, and L seven as one thing. Um, so get rid of that and put this right here. Recalc PP SLA one fresh. And the, did I link these? I forgot. I meant to link them. Yes, I did. Good. Uh, so then this should be the next one. Here. Nope. Uh, okay. Interesting. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, because I need to expand it. I think the same formula could work, but not if I don't expand it first. Okay. So then that's still. Huh? That's not good. 81. Okay, so show me game 81. Definitely not 1064. What? Ah, right, sorry, because I'm saying max, but what I now want is sum. So I was mixing myself up. So that's the combined score combined. Okay, so sorry. Level 4 does need to be separate. As then L5 and 6 and L7. Blah. Okay, so we'll go back to just max here. And then we'll do sum here. That was a bit silly, but never mind. So we're going to calc. And uh, now C equals D. And then we're good. Okay, so that's 56. So the next one will be 57. Okay, happy days. And then I think there was a question about level 5 as one of the bonuses. What is the highest score achieved by the player who took fourth place in any of the games on level 5? Okay. Oh, so I do need another thing in my data table again. Mm. And I need another thing for that also. Okay, fine. So B4 and B5. I don't know why I keep rebuilding this data table, but never mind. Uh, okay. So for B4, I'm interested in the highest score achieved by the player who took fourth place. Uh, and level five is, I think, the one where there only are four players. Yes. So that's just going to be the min of these. Then we recalculate. We go to level five. And it's this range, right? 100 to, yes. So it's going to be min of, no, I'm sorry, highest score of the losers. So it's going to be here, down to 100. And we're good. Okay. Across all the matches, how many times did a player score 1,000 points or more in a game? So here we want uh, equals count ifs. Uh, this greater than or equal to 1,000. Uh, sorry. No, 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 no. Calc, so we got some there, and that's from level four on. Then I need to work out levels one, and levels two and three. So here the max is 877, so nobody does. And here the max is 981, so nobody does. Okay, so then it should just be the sum of those things in the data table. Let's see. <coughs> nope, wrong. Hmm. Oh, sorry, that's because I have not done level seven right yet. Okay, so probably the answer should be less than that, but we'll come back to that. Okay, so now we have to do level 7. Let's do that next. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm just going to do elimination rank, uh, and that's going to be, let's go to example 7. Uh, so this is going to be rank, there are no ties, I'm pretty sure it said, of this number in this reference. So this, yeah, so higher is better. Mm, okay. So then elimination score, that's going to be uh, if this is greater than three, then you're eliminated. Uh, and if that is the case, then you get your score times, so let's see, if you're eighth place, you get one five minute block, and then each place you move up, you get another five minute block. So it should be nine minus your rank times five divided by 30. Uh, otherwise, zero. I think that's right, but let's, oops, sorry. Let's just check it's working. So say that over that. 
So the person who comes seventh gets 10 minutes, which is a third of the time. The person who comes sixth gets five minutes, uh, gets 15, which is half the time, two thirds of the time, one sixth, five sixths, yes. I think that's working, so then we just need to round these to zero decimal places. Uh, so then non elim re lock is going to be if this equals zero, then uh, this, otherwise zero. Then luck is going to work basically the same as before. Uh, so we can copy this, put it across, but now point to here and here. So luck comes in for everyone. And then final is going to be if this, then, no, sorry, let's just, just in case, let's start with if this equals zero, then zero. Well, actually, no, then I guess we take that. Uh, ah, sorry, if this equals zero, then we want round of this plus if you get luck, then add the luck, otherwise zero, round that to zero decimal places, and if you were already eliminated, then we take your elimination score. That's the final scores. I'm interested in the sum of those for level seven. Mm. So let's hit refresh, four, eight, nine, six. Yes, that's good. So then we come down here, and I think I want from 121 on. Uh, better hope I don't, because that's wrong. Uh, okay. Wait, really? Oh, no, you're pointing at the wrong one. So it should be column E. Try again. Huh, interesting. Got all of them right except the first one. That's weird. There's probably some funky edge case going on there, but um, all right, never mind. Um, okay, so then uh, I guess I'm just going to say over 1,000. Um, let's see. I'm going to X match this against. Oh, actually, no. What I want is to X look up and get the game number or the level number. Sorry. Uh, so. The level is in column C. So returning from C. Uh, what's going on? There we go. Okay, so then I'm going to say uh, uh, just final. Uh, that's going to be if uh, this lock equals seven, then this. Otherwise, uh, this. And then I'll just point this to there, and hopefully that'll work out my bonus five. Let's see if it does. It does. No, it, no, sorry, because I deleted it. Okay, fine, that makes sense. Yes, okay, hooray. So this is a mystery. Could just be a mistake. Uh, it's weird that I would get this right and get this wrong. Off by nine. Let's see. What else could account for that? Um, so let's just put all these together. Concat this, then, uh, sorry, I'll take upper of that, and then I'm just going to get all the letters out of that. So I'm going to say uh, concat text split um, this by this and then put it back together, so that is everything else. Uh, and then, I guess what I want is mid of this sequence. So I'm just gonna take all the characters from here, sequence len of that uh, one, that gives me all the characters. Take unique of that, and then count diffs. This by this. Ah, okay, so that then that looks like it is counting the apostrophes and the ampersands, which was my theory before, but I thought I tested that. So how did I get that wrong? So, 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 uh, equals substitute, substitute, upper. Uh, sorry, I don't even need upper now because I'm only stripping out. So substitute space to blank, and substitute colon to blank and take the len of that 
could have sworn I tested that earlier, but apparently I didn't. Uh, okay, so don't love that. I kind of agree with my answer more. It says ignore spaces and colons, but it's also those other things are not letters. But anyway, okay. So that's the difference there. Uh, no big whoop. Uh, I'll have to go and check if anybody got that right. I guess probably, I, I again, this is where I spent time looking at this. So as soon as I saw ignore spaces and semicolons, I went and looked at this and was like, is there anything else? Uh, and sure enough, there is an ampersand and there's a, an apostrophe and whatever. But I guess if you just read the instructions and did it quickly, then you would probably just put them all together, strip those two things out with the substitute method, and it would work fine. Anyway, okay, so that's that. And then the other thing is there's one question here that I got wrong. What's going on there? So, I guess first thing is elimination rank, yes. Elimination score, yeah. So, here's all the scores pre-luck. So, this person is winning, this person is second, this person is third, this person is fourth, fifth, Sixth, okay, so whatever. Let's say eighth person, they get one sixth of their points. That makes sense. All right, let's just see what is the answer that we're looking for. Four, nine, eight, one. So we're off by quite a bit, actually. It must be to do with luck, whether luck applies or not. Ah, hmm. let's see. So this over the next place person minus one. Oh, interesting. So it's, so suppose I just put false here. Would that, that wouldn't account for it all, would it? Four, oh, interesting, it would. Four, nine, eight, one. Okay. So I think maybe my answer is right on that one. Because uh, it does say not, at various points, it says not to round uh, interim calculations. Uh, well, I'm sure that it does say that somewhere. Uh, round. It says various places to round your outputs, but I think it, anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. Not important. So I guess the answer is that if we were to round something along the way here, then this person would be within 10% of, oh, sorry, would, yes, would not be within, would be 10%, not less than 10% away from that one, then they would have no luck and then and then, and then, and then. Okay. All right. So, I don't know, two answers I kind of disagree with there, but uh, I would have to say that one went quite smoothly for me, but that is sort of to be expected because uh, this was a very high scoring round anyway, and then on top of that, I had a bunch of time to look at it and, and have a think in advance. So, seems kind of fair. Anyway, that's what I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, and like I said, next time, I think, or pretty soon anyway, I'm going to try and tackle that finals case. That's... A little bit, a little bit of PTSD in revisiting that, but I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Thanks for watching.